How to operate the Takeo Viridian High Efficiency Circulator This video was created to help the HVAC professional install and maintain Takeo equipment. Please read the on-screen disclaimer before viewing this video. The Takeo Viridian pump is a self-sensing, high-efficiency, variable-speed pump with ECM motor that can be monitored and controlled via PC or laptop computer. This video will show you how to wire the Viridian electrical connections, set up your computer connection to the Viridian, and control the Viridian through the user interface. How to make the Viridian electrical connections Loosen the screws holding the terminal box cover in place and remove the cover to see the electrical connections. Note that the label on the terminal box cover provides all pertinent information about your pump such as voltage range, amp range, model and version number, etc. If you are making the initial power connection, you will find a plastic bag under the terminal box cover. This contains a ferrite core adapter to reduce possible EMF electrical interference from the Viridian's frequency drive. Use of the ferrite core adapter is optional and does not affect the Viridian warranty in any way. To prepare the Viridian for connection to an AC power outlet, First thread the three-wire power cord through the strain relief connector. As shipped from the factory, the black wire is positive, the white wire is neutral, and the green wire is ground. If desired, thread the power cord through the ferrite core adapter. For low voltage, 110 to 120 volt single-phase power, connect the three wires of the power cord to the corresponding labeled electrical terminals the black positive wire to L, the white neutral wire to N, and the green ground wire to the ground terminal. Using the quick connect, push down connectors. For high voltage, 200 to 240 volt single phase power, L1 and L2 can be connected to either the L or N Viridian terminals and the ground wire to the ground connection. The Viridian is now wired for connection to an AC outlet for initial setup and programming. Please note that the Viridian is a wet rotor pump which uses system fluid for lubrication. Although the Viridian is protected against dry run, to avoid possible damage when programming the pump in systems that are not properly filled with system fluid, the Viridian should first be placed in standby mode. In this mode, the pump is fully powered but will not run. Do not connect to a power outlet until you have placed Viridian in standby mode. To place Viridian in standby mode, attach a jumper wire from the IO1 terminal to the 0 volts terminal. A flashing blue light on top of the Viridian indicates that the pump is in standby mode. AC power can now be applied for programming. When you have completed programming through the Viridian interface, Simply remove the jumper wire to begin operation of the pump. How to make the computer connection to the Viridian Viridian status can be monitored and its operations controlled remotely using a personal computer or laptop. Viridian is web-enabled, which means you communicate with the pump through Viridian's internal web browser. To communicate, your computer must also have an internet browser installed, such as Chrome, Firefox, Safari or Internet Explorer, but an active internet connection is not required. The computer must also be connected to the Viridian either directly or through a router to a computer network or LAN using standard RJ45, CAT4 or better Ethernet cable. To make this connection, remove the Viridian terminal box cover. Insert the Ethernet cable in the Viridian's Ethernet port. Insert the other end of the cable into the PC or router Ethernet port. The physical connection between Viridian and the computer is now complete. How to set the Viridian IP address In order to communicate with a Viridian via a PC, Mac or laptop, the computer's wired internet connection or LAN must be changed from a dynamic internet protocol or IP address, which is obtained automatically, to a static IP which is assigned by the user. This IP address identifies that specific Viridian pump, just as a mailing address identifies a specific house in a particular city and state. The Viridian is shipped from the factory with a generic IP address 
192.168.0.245. In addition, all Viridian pumps are shipped from the factory with a generic NetBIOS name, which is simply Viridian. To communicate with the Viridian, you must know either the IP address or the NetBIOS name of the pump. Simply open your computer's internet browser. In the address bar, type one of the following. HTTP colon forward slash forward slash Viridian or the factory default IP address 192.168.0.245. You will see the overview screen of the Viridian's user interface. If you are operating one or more Viridian pumps in a standalone self-sensing configuration, you can choose to retain the IP address and or NetBIOS name as assigned at the factory. However, if you are operating multiple pumps connected by a wireless router or building management system, then each pump must have its own distinct IP address that is different from all other Viridian pumps in the network. For instructions on how to change the IP addresses for multiple Viridian pumps, please see our video on that subject. It is often convenient to change the names of the Viridian pumps in your installation to provide a functional description of the pump. For example, you could name the pump Heat Pump 3 or HP3. The NetBIOS name can be changed easily in the Viridian user interface, as we will demonstrate later in this video. If you change either the NetBIOS name or IP address of your Viridian pump from the factory default, it is essential that you record the changes, preferably on the job site or on the pump itself. Without either the IP address or the NetBIOS name, it will be extremely difficult to communicate with Viridian or control its operation. How to use the Viridian user interface The Viridian user interface provides the tools for you to monitor and control the Viridian pump. The interface includes five screens. This is the overview or pump status screen. Here you can see the current status of your Viridian pump. The values on your screen will vary based on which model Viridian you are monitoring. The numbers in brackets indicate the maximum range of values available for the setting. Please note that if power to the motor is interrupted by a jumper wire, the speed in RPMs, estimated head and flow, etc. will be zero. Use this overview page to monitor the performance of your pump. You can adjust how frequently the values on this page are refreshed, from never to every three seconds. The estimated efficiency is based on line to water and includes inefficiencies of wet end, motor, and variable frequency drive. Operating hours, the number of restarts, and energy consumed are summary data and cannot be reset. All pump operating parameters are modified on the following screens. The Pump or Regulation Settings page The Pump Regulation Settings page is where you can change the operating parameters of your Viridian pump. The values shown are the pump's current settings. If you are doing initial programming, the values shown are the pump's factory default settings. Each setting has a drop-down menu that shows the range of values available. Click on the setting box to show the drop-down menu. Click again on the desired value to change the setting. Be sure to click Save before exiting. Limit Head adjusts the maximum pump head. The pump will try to maintain that head between ports. HMAX proportional to Q% percent adjusts the slope of the Viridian's inclining performance curve. 0% is a flat or constant pressure curve for low head systems. 65% is a steep inclining curve for high head systems. Limit RPM can provide a head regulation similar to a manual adjustable pump. Regulation will reduce the pump power until none of the parameters will be exceeded. The Network Connections page The network page displays the current network connection settings, including the pump IP address, subnet mask address, default gateway address, and net BIOS name. If you change either the IP address or NetBIOS name on this page, you must use the new setting the next time you communicate with Viridian. It is essential to record these settings in a separate location. Without either the IP address or the NetBIOS name, it will be extremely difficult to communicate with Viridian or control its operation. 
The twin mode with IP setting is for use only when two Viridians are used in main and standby applications. Please download the Viridian installation and operation manual at the link below this video or contact Heiko Technical Support for this and other network connection settings. The Error Log Page The Error Log Page displays the current error, if any, and the last recorded error. Taiko tests the Viridian literally to a fault. Please note that when doing initial programming that errors indicated on the log page were deliberately induced during testing at the factory. The Viridian is protected against a variety of failures. Click on See Error Description for error details, the probable cause, and the solution. The Valerian diagnostics detect the following types of failures. Low load detected. Overload trip. Protective shutdown. Motor too hot. Frequency converter errors. And motor state or faults. Error code numbers correspond to the operation of the Viridian's diagnostic and operating indicator light located on the top of the case. If any of these five overload conditions occur, the blue power light changes to red and flashes. One flash indicates a low load or dry run detected. When this condition is detected, the pump runs at reduced speed after approximately 60 seconds. The probable cause of this error is the pump running dry because there is insufficient fluid in the system to prevent bearing damage. The fluid level should be checked and the system filled as needed. The pump returns to normal speed once the condition has been corrected and the motor load increased. Two flashes indicate internal overload. When this condition is detected, the pump shuts off. The likely cause is overcurrent, a line surge, or a locked rotor causing the pump to restart. Check to see that the rotor is spinning freely and clear obstructions if necessary. Manual reset is required. Turn the main power supply off, wait 30 seconds, and turn power back on. Three flashes indicate that the motor has exceeded the allowed temperature. When this condition is detected, the pump runs at reduced power until the motor cools down. This condition can be caused by extremely hot medium in the system or a hardware failure. The motor must be cooled before resuming normal operation. Four flashes indicate a frequency converter error in the variable frequency drive caused by a converter internal fault. The pump may still be running but must be shut down for repair. Manual reset is required. Turn the main power supply off, wait 30 seconds, and turn the power back on. If the pump is unable to reset, the pump power head requires replacement. Five flashes indicate motor or stator failure. In this condition, the pump will shut down. The motor windings must be inspected for possible repair. This condition requires manual reset. Turn the main power supply off, wait 30 seconds, and turn power back on. If the pump is unable to reset, the pump power head requires replacement. For additional information, please contact Taiko Technical Support. The Help Page If you have an active connection to the Internet, clicking on the Help Page tab will connect you with Viridian help resources on the Taiko website. That concludes this video on the basic setup and control of the Viridian pump. Please see other videos in this Viridian training series. For additional resources, product information, and comprehensive tech support, please visit Taiko on the web at www.taiko-hvac.com.